Today is the fourth day that we have been talking about mudita and practicing it. Um, <clears throat> I'd like to uh, focus on one aspect, one further aspect from the commentary. It says in Pali, Arati Vikata Pajupatana. Arati Vikata Pajupatana. The quality of Mutita. <clears throat> uh, helps us to dispel the negative emotion of irritation, annoyance, um, agitation, disinterest, like that. We have been talking about disinterest for the last uh, two days. When we are not interested in what is happening here and now, the present moment, maybe a lecture, maybe uh, somebody um, attending you know, it's a conference, or maybe somebody tending a garden, or maybe somebody enjoying okay, his own coffee. Um, his own wealth, his own knowledge, and to be disinterested um, is a form of, in part what we call arati, is a form of unhappiness. It may be very mild, it may be not as obvious, Nevertheless, that's the seed of unhappiness. Arati vikata pachupatana. This is the, uh, the how commentary, Abhidhamma commentary, the Atasalini talks about it. <clears throat> we can easily be annoyed by something that we don't agree annoyed by something that we think is nonsense. Sometimes we are even annoyed by someone's ignorance. We become really impatient with someone's ignorance. If we have to repeat the same thing again and again. Here, you know, we can compare ourselves with a mother who has only one child. A mother would teach her child um, a language, maybe a word, how to say a word, again and again until her child gets it. Uh, how to walk and how to eat by themselves. The mother takes a lot of time and she has all the patience. Why? Because she has both Karuna and Mudita, the qualities. Uh, here, although we are talking about Mudita, joyful feeling, I like to bring in, I just like to mention, you know, one aspect of. Compassion Karuna, that is Satanam Anatha Bhava Dasana Padata. To look at living beings as if they are helpless. You know, to feel uh, motivated in helping them. So, because the mother has that quality, she has all the patience in guiding her child, in teaching her child. And when, when her child can pronounce one word, maybe mommy, daddy, lunch, uh, good, like that. The mother is overjoyed. 
the ability of the mother to feel mudita for her child is extraordinary. This is the very reason why the Buddha uh, has chosen a mother with only one child to do this, <coughs> to, to teach us about uh, Brahma Vihara qualities. Okay, the mother and only one child. If we see somebody doing so well, at that moment when, we, when that person is in front of us, can we be totally focused, concentrated? Can we pay our total attention to that person, rejoicing in that person's achievement? Many of us, okay, we have we will have short span, um, attention span in this uh, kind of situation because our brain default position, as I mentioned, the, as I discussed the other day, is fear. Instead of rejoicing in the person's success, in the person's positive qualities, we actually um, feel or threatened, we feel threatened by the person's success. We feel if the person will get more recognition, will get more attention, will get more credit. These are all fear. Fear. So, already we got a Pajupatthana. This description of mudita talks about removing fear which is the cause of the cause of unhappiness the cause of annoyance when we see somebody doing something nonsense now subconsciously if our mind cannot make sense anything there is fear We only feel comfortable when we can make sense, when the world makes sense. So the world remains a scary place until we make sense of everything. When the Buddha um, taught us that we should look at the world as impermanence, whatever we look at, it, okay, things are changing all the time, never remaining the same. So if we look at that in us, in other people, in the people we love, in the people we hate, in the people who love us, in the people who hate us, actually everything is the same. Things are just changing all the time, never lasting forever. Everything is transient and impermanent. Then both at the conscious level and subconscious level, everything makes sense. At that moment, fear drops. Fear drops. So, in working on mudita, in working on mudita, this evening, I'm going to ask you to expand a little bit. We are still working on three groups, the first three groups. The first one, ourselves. The second one, our nearest and dearest one, that is um, our family members and teachers. The third one, our colleagues. But here, <clears throat> the procedure for this evening, the first one, uh, please focus on yourself, just on yourself. The hard work that you put in in order to, to write an essay, you know how much you have to read. Look at your, your own effort. Look at what you are producing. I'm just taking um, a student's life as an example. 
you know, and teachers, and lecturers, uh, a staff, a librarian, a cook, an office staff, a cataloger, a digitizer, everyone. Okay, just think about um, <clears throat> one piece of work. To get one piece of work done, how much effort you have to put into. Think about it. Spend some time on yourself until you can feel mudita. Now, once you can feel mudita on yourself, now without thinking about the success of the second group and the third group as we did yesterday, today I'd like to introduce you mudita and the law of interdependence. When you write your essay, <clears throat> there are many people who support you directly and indirectly. When you read a text, when you read maybe a secondary source, you read a book. To write one book takes usually about two and a half years. In Oxford, professors take about two and a half years to complete a research so that it becomes a book. So if you read for your essay, if you read three books, trying to see those authors, those scholars with their work, how they put effort into their work until they become published. Rejoice in their effort, in their knowledge, in their success, which is a part of your work now. In other words, recognize their role in your work. If you read a Pali text, well, it takes, it has taken um, many centuries for the Tripitaka, the Buddhist scriptures, to be, um, to accumulate a form that they are now in a text, as a text, as a printed text as a digital form, as a digital format. Just about 150 years ago, people were still using manuscript, palm leaves, like that, 200 years ago. And it took a lot of time for them, a lot of effort for them to actually preserve those And the transportation, the communication was very difficult. Anyway, they preserved the whole Tupitaka. So they are part, I mean, we have to recognize their role. You know, when we, when we, do, when we write. I'm not saying that we, we need to write about them, but to rejoice to feel grateful, to rejoice in their hard work, in their good job, in their good work. And then to feel connected with them. Our parents did, uh, did their best for us. So we need to recognize their role as well. Our teachers, and perhaps the teachers of our teachers, if we know them, they ensure that 
we have this opportunity to succeed. And if you think about this, your success in the, in the past, you can apply this uh, practice in the same way. So by expanding the energy of Karuna in this way, okay, by recognizing the role of other people, directly or indirectly, in your own success. You are over overcoming many things, many um, <clears throat> negative emotions, self-centeredness for a start. Yeah. We still have self-confidence. Nevertheless, you know, we wouldn't be too saps and we, would, we wouldn't be too full of ourselves. We would stay connected with the people, some directly, some indirectly, in, our, in, <clears throat> in the enabling our success. For me to write an essay, I need to use the electricity. There's a huge industry, the people who created it, and up to the people who made it possible that we have good electricity here at this university. So all around, there are many things for us to rejoice in. And this is the way to remove a habit of being annoyed easily, being irritated easily, being too judgmental about what we see, what we hear. By doing so, we will still be coming face to face with the old problem. Problem of disinterest, being disinterested in the role of other people, in recognizing the role of other people in our life, in our success. We um, we don't feel comfortable to acknowledge that as a, as a human being, we need each other so much. You know, we don't feel that comfortable. We have fear if we accept, that, if we recognize that way, that our role will become insignificant, our success will become insignificant and other people will take advantage of us. They will become dominant in our life. You know, we have all sorts of fear. So if Modi diagnosis that kind of fear, then there's a good progress. Mudita is uh, helping you to diagnose deeper and deeper issues, problems to work with. And we should be happy to work on those issues. So let me simplify once again the instruction. First is uh, just to develop mudita for yourself, for your hard work, for your success, for what you're doing, for what you have done for who you are. By doing this, the end result is that you, we all will be comfortable in our own skin. Spend about half of the time, 
maybe two thirds of the time on yourself. From now on, you know, you will have about 20 minutes because I'll be speaking in Burmese as well. So spend 10 minutes at least on yourself, maybe more, 15 minutes like that. Then in the end, recognize other people, the role of other people in your life, in your life. And look at how the Buddha recognized other people's role in the, in the Jataka. He recognized them. And when we recognize them, one byproduct result that we, we get is reconciliation. Reconciliation with our past, reconciliation with other people. We feel annoyed. We used to feel annoyed. So that would be the end result. So now you can start meditating. I'm going to be speaking in Burmese. <clears throat> Retrieve the data from users for you. 
Mm. Yeah. Very good. <clears throat> Mudita helps you to diagnose. I mean, not helping is one thing, but feeling annoying is another. At the moment you connect them, actually they are two separate things. If, you know, because of the time limit and you can't help and you, you, you have the person uh, without feeling agitated by his behavior, then there wouldn't be any impact, negative impact on your, on your mind. Um, the fact that at that moment you feel annoyed by his attitude, his behavior, um, his lack of effort, then at the last minute, you know, he came and bothered you, you know, that, that um, negative reaction was registered in your subconscious mind. And now with this mudita, it comes up. You have the opportunity to um, uh, acknowledge that and to, to heal. You know. Acknowledge her pain. Yes, this pain is very big, and you just listen to the and and and, and then ask her, Do you dream about him? Um, do you remember him every day? And and like what? And ask her willingly. Interest, you know, to so show your interest. Then. If she is able to talk, you talk. You will understand her more, understand her pain. If you listen to her, she will feel that somebody understands her pain. She wouldn't feel lonely. Otherwise, she feels that she has no one um, recognizing her pain. So that's the first one. <clears throat> the second one is um, um, 
she needs to make sense why her son died very young. She needs to make sense. And this one, by talking to her, by listening to her, and then at some point, you will be able to help her to make sense. Some good people, they die very young, um, and how they move on like that. No. And <clears throat> she and her son, the relationship in this life, um, however short, it was um, an excellent one. And they had um, you know, pure metta for each other. And, and that sort of thing, you know, to, to find something positive that she could uh, understand and then and make sense of her, herself. She, she could still be proud of being a mother of that, that son. Mm. After that, because this, this grieving process, now she's still, after many years, she's still in the grieving process. If she wants to do something um, for her son, in her son's um, um, name, in her son's memory, maybe planting a tree in the monasteries, um, or doing paint, or donating a painting, <clears throat> about, you know, from from some of the jatakas in, in his memory, or in 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 Shan tradition, you know, usually the family would donate, uh, would ask the jury to copy Liglong, and donate it in the memory of the deceased. That kind of thing she can do, and and hopefully that will be a closure for her. At the moment, she is still. Um, because she, she, she hasn't got the opportunity to, to grieve properly. So whenever she sees you, that becomes a trigger. A trigger. You see, a trigger for her loss. Yeah. That would be my, my advice. Oh, oh. Here, here, here. Mm. <laughs> oh, you look very young. You look very young. <laughs> I have had to do uh, so many things, but that's the same as we have to be happy. But <clears throat> then I will. And also I work every day. I don't know how to be happy all the time. Mm. But I worry. Uh, but sometimes I worry. Uh, but now I want to be happy all the time. Mm. But I cannot. How to oh. party to be happy? Oh, <laughs> you, miss, <clears throat> you miss three days. This is the fourth day of Mudita. <laughs> you miss three days of happiness. <laughs> <clears throat> you see, when we had uh, a celebration for your PhD here on my birthday, what you told me, whenever I remember that, okay, it filled me with joy. Okay, <clears throat> you said um, you come from a family, oh no, you come from a village with only five houses, five families. And now you have come up to this level. This level, you are serving the whole Sangha as both Danka Wunsam in the country, one of the 300 monks to be serving at that level. Um, <clears throat> um, in your monastery in Bangalore, you are the only one who graduated with the Majora degree from that monastery. Only yeah, only you. You see, so you have to think about it. Revisit when you study, revisit how hard is it, like that. And then um, be proud of your own effort, your own success. Think about it again and again. 
When you wake up in the morning, before you get up, give yourself one minute, just one sixty second. Think about how hard you you work, okay, to pass the master degree, and then after that, you didn't even know A B C. Okay, um, <clears throat> uh, were you in your thirties when you went to Sri Lanka? How old? Thirty six. So you start. A B C, yeah, A B C at the age of thirty six. You see, <clears throat> and then he got a PhD, you know, from Sri Lanka, M E N PhD from Sri Lanka. He worked very hard. He went to uh, British Council uh, to study English, and maybe the teachers were younger than you, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> The oldest in the class, yes. So that one you need to be proud, because you 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 never give up, you never give up. And now during my birthday, some of your student, some of his student, okay, they came here as interpreter. They they speak very good English, but they have never met a foreigner. So they study English with him in Bangalore. So a lot to be proud of him. But he himself he forgets all of it. <laughs> that is why. <laughs> that is why he doesn't have happiness. <clears throat> so so, you know, then, according to what we do, what we practice today, after that, after you have done mudita for yourself, again and again, now you have to recognize the role of other people in your life. Your parents, your teacher, your um, devotee, your supporters, like that. If you think about that rule, you recognize that rule. Okay, uh, how they help you to succeed, and and also the other way around, how you make them happy, how you make them proud like this. Then you will be happy, twenty four hours a day. <laughs> So is it true? 
is correct if we practice together? <clears throat> is correct? Actually, I mentioned the other day in my answer to one of you that um, uh, at the more advanced stage, uh, we have to work on just one issue and to develop both Karuna and Mutita. Today, you can look at your shortcoming and then, you know, um, uh, recognize your uh, current limitation and feel compassion for yourself. But at the same time, the information that you brought out today, you know, you brought um, to the uh, workshop, we just didn't have it, we didn't know. Only you knew it. <clears throat> so we actually learn a lot from, from your writing. And it takes a lot of time to gather um, a lot of information like that. So if you visualize yourself going to the library, um, borrowing books, reading them, and trying to understand them, and then trying to get some gist and put it into your writing, you will have a lot of mudita. Just focusing on uh, today's piece of writing. Piece of writing. But then you can also um, visualize um, Bobby's book, Ainsworth's book, and how they uh, work hard okay, to come up with, with that kind of theory and um, to the extent that they publish and then um, receive recognition widely from other uh, fellow professionals. So you appreciate them, you recognize their role in your work, then your, your mudita will be strengthened. I'm saying how, uh, how mudita is strengthened because by recognizing other people's role in our work, we are reducing self-centeredness. We are reducing this. We still have self-confidence. Uh, self, um, At the same time, we are removing the side effect, which is self-centeredness. at the back. It's, it's normal. Um, <clears throat> I was saying the other day that uh, uh, Mudita, one of Mudita's functions is to diagnose, to diagnose, you know, what is there in a subconscious mind. And this is what uh, it was doing in your case. Um, so some of the The 
subconscious habit that we have accumulated, we don't usually see them. If we don't meditate, we don't usually see them. But they are there, like a shadow. Okay? Like a shadow, influencing our thinking. So if uh, you have negative um, feeling, you have a lot of positive feeling towards uh, the person, but you have some negative feelings as well. That mixed feeling um, so, so will become apparent in the way you deal with that person. Because those um, mixed emotions, they actually dictate your behavior, your decision. <clears throat> so, when we see that kind of negative emotion, uh, negative uh, reaction, um, we have to stop mutita for a few seconds and then acknowledge that uh, you are very familiar with Mahasi. You can acknowledge that. You can accept that, uh, that negative feeling without being judgmental, without um, um, saying good or bad, you know without adding any value judgment, but just recognize it as, uh, okay, this is pain, if you like. You can recognize it as pain, or um, a certain form of negative emotion, you know. Breathe in and out and recognize that. Just be with that. Just be with that painful emotion. If with mindfulness we are with that kind of painful emotion, and those painful emotions, they don't increase. They don't increase. They only grow in the subconscious mind when we are not aware of them. Avijja, Bhajya, Sankara, Avijja, when we are not aware of them, Sankara, they react and react and react, grow and grow and grow. That's what happened. <clears throat> so you need to actually uh, be positive about that mental reaction. Okay, maybe this is about what this evening. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.